Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Patty, and you're with Chosen by God Ministries, where we are connecting people to God through his word, his work, and his worship. And you've joined us tonight for our weekly Bible study recap. If you've been following with us, we have been studying 2 Corinthians, the heart of ministry. And tonight we're studying chapter 12, where Paul is continuing his defense of his apostolic authority. But tonight's topic is defense with deficits. Defense with deficits. Okay, so grab your Bibles, your pens, your study notebook, and let's get ready to learn of God's word together. Let's pray. Kind Father, we thank you again for this day and for this time. And as always, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to study your word. So God, we ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to come in today and illuminate the word on today. So not only that we gain knowledge, but God, we will also be able to apply it to our lives so that we might be better and that we might share the word of God with others. God, we thank you for all those who turn their hearts and minds toward Bible study. Bless us for coming and don't let our coming be in vain. It's in Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Thank God. Amen. All right. So tonight we're going to listen to our scripture in the King James Version. We've been um, listening to different versions of the Bible. Tonight we're going to do the King James Version. Chapter 12. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above fourteen years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knows how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me. For I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God in Christ. But we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. 
for I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, stripes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, and lest when I come again my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. Amen. Okay, that was chapter 12. And may the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. So remember, we're in the last a few chapters of 2 Corinthians, chapters 10 to 13. Paul begins to address those false apostles who have been accusing him of taking advantage of the Corinthian church, of taking their money, um, saying that Paul is not qualified um, to be an apostle and just really attacking his character and his integrity. And Paul takes to um, make his defense. Remember chapter 11, he did not use the normal way of defense. He um, talked about other things. Well, today he's defending himself, but he's talking about the deficits that he has and how God uses those deficits to bring God glory and to bring life to the church. And so he's going to say, I'm going to boast today. But what I'm going to boast is not what most people boast in. Most people want to boast in the good things and their strength. But Paul's going to show us how he's going to boast in his weaknesses. Okay, so first we have verses 1 through 6. This is Paul's vision of paradise. Now, Paul is very humble because this is him, but he is speaking about this person in the third person. Paul always wants to um, humble himself and not to exalt himself. So Paul goes to tell us that, hey, I... Uh, received a revelation of paradise. God took me to heaven and I witnessed the beauty of heaven and I heard the mysteries of God and things that were just so wonderful that I'm just not even able to repeat what I saw and what I heard. And, and how special is Paul that God took him to heaven? How special is Paul that he had this vision? Paul could have gloried in this because he had access that nobody else had. But Paul chose not to, he chose this time to talk about this, but this happened 14 years ago, according to Paul, which means Paul never even discussed it before now because he didn't want people to elevate him as some great person and not really um, look at God. So that's why he said he didn't want to tell of this glorious encounter because somebody might elevate Paul and not really focus on his ministry. But this shows us that God was honoring Paul. So that was his first experience. Now, his second experience he talks about is this thorn in his flesh. Now, he says that we never know what this thorn is, but we do know it's some physical infirmary. There's, some, there's something in his body. And he says that he had this physical infirm, infirmity. He sought God three times to remove it. And God did not answer that prayer. But God, his answer to him was, my grace is sufficient for these. This is verse 9. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So how is that when you are working and you're serving God and you're doing everything that he calls you to do? Paul talks about all the sufferings that he went through, all the lack that he suffered. And now he has this thorn in his flesh and he prayed to God and God would not deliver him. Here is Paul who is working signs and wonders and miracles among the people. And he prays to God and God won't work a miracle in his own body. Amen. How do we deal with that when God is using us to bless others, but God is not blessing us? That God is using us to help others to come to know him when God and then God doesn't deliver us. 
Amen. Paul gives us an example of even when God says no, it is for our benefit. Even when God says no, there is a yes, even in the no that God says. He says no, but when he says no, there's still a benefit even in God's no. Come on, can we praise God for his no? Amen. We can praise him for his yes, but can you praise him for his no? Praise our God. Now, uh, Paul wants us to know there are many reasons why you may be suffering in your body. So let's be let's be clear. Sometimes we just suffer and our bodies come through age. As you get older, your body um, deteriorates and you may have pain and suffering in your body. It just comes from the aging process or you may have been injured and your body, you are suffering in your body. Sometimes we are suffering in our bodies um, because we have been abusive to our bodies. Um, we have uh, maybe abused them with drugs or alcohol or substances, or we haven't got the right amount of sleep or we eat too much. So many things that we have done. And so things that we're suffering with are a consequence of us not taking care of our physical bodies appropriately. But Paul is talking about he received this thorn in his flesh, not for those reasons, but because God allows Satan to buffet him. God allows Satan to give him something to suffer with. Amen. So here it is. Not only do I have a thorn in my flesh, but this thorn in my flesh is because Satan came to buffet me. And God, you are allowing this thorn to remain in my flesh. This is the burden that comes with the blessing. This is the burden that comes with a blessing because this is how God allows Paul to stay humble. This is how Paul does not get the big head because Paul has been to heaven now. Paul has seen visions that other men have not seen. Paul is working miracles, signs, and wonders. Paul is well known. Paul is traveling. And this is how God keeps him humble. There's a burden with the blessing, but also God gives him grace. Amen. What is grace? Grace is what God gives us when we do not deserve. It is God's provision for our every need when we need it. This is the grace that God has given him. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee, right? My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So because you have this thorn in your flesh, you have to depend on me for strength. And Paul says, I'm going to glory in this thorn because this a thorn allows the power of God and the power of Christ to rest on me. And I can glory in that, that the power of Christ can rest on me. So when I'm weak, then I'm really strong. Here's Paul boasting in his deficit, right? He's I'm, when I'm weak, when I got this thorn in my flesh, then I'm really strong. Because I am dependent on God. So now, first he has experience in paradise where God has honored him. Now he has this thorn in his flesh where God has humbled him. But now God has also shown him grace. Verses 9 through 10. Um, and that provides for him for every need that he may have. Amen. And so our next section is where Paul actually does the, his uh, apostolic defense and where he's beginning to call out the Corinthian church on their sinful ways and their sinful behaviors. Um, he first tells them, and this is in verse um, 11, that um, in 11, 12, and 13, where he says, you know, I work a lot of signs and wonders among you. I, I'm not, I am just as uh, of equal stature to these other false apostles that are wrong. I'm not, I'm not less than them. I'm not greater than them. I'm equal to them. I'm just as great as they are. Um, but you won't boast of me, Corinthian church, but you should be the one. I shouldn't have to say anything about who I am or what I've done because you are the uh, result. You are the beneficiary of my ministry. And you, Corinthian church, should be commending me to the false apostle. You, Corinthian church, should be standing up for me. But you're not. He says that I, I work the signs of the apostles among you. 
and wonders, mighty deeds that were done among you. Paul then talks about how selfish they are. Because Paul says, I wasn't burning some when I came to you. When I came to minister to you, I took care of myself. Other churches took care of me, not you. I was ministering to you, Corinthian church. I was doing miracle signs and wonders to you, Corinthian church, but you didn't even take care of me. Other churches had to take care of me. So Paul talks about his unselfish service to you. He said, so I treat you just like my child because as a child, you shouldn't take care of a parent. The parent takes care of the child. So Paul talks about his unselfish service to um, the Corinthian church. And now he says, this is gonna be my third time coming to you. And I'm just afraid when I come, I'm not gonna find you where you need to be. Paul lets them know they, uh, he accuses them of not appreciating him. He says, when I came, I didn't take anything from you. I gave to you, but you did not appreciate me. So Paul says, one, you did not commend me. Two, you did not take care of me when I was of service to you when you rightly should have. You were selfish, even though I was unselfish. And thirdly, you did not appreciate me. You did not appreciate what I was bringing to you. So Paul says, but that's okay. I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to care for you, even though you don't love me. Isn't that just like God? The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Aren't you glad that God, Paul, is showing us a demonstration of how God treats us? Even when we don't love God, even when we don't talk about God, even when we don't commend God to talk about his great works and his mighty acts, even when we're selfish and we won't even give him the use of our time, our talent, and our treasure, and we're being selfish with who we are, and even when we don't even appreciate God, God still loves us. Amen. And his grace is sufficient to us that he comes to us time and time again and gives us opportunity after opportunity to get it right with him. We praise God for his grace and for his mercy. Amen. So now Paul says, um, even my representatives, when they came, when Titus came and the brothers came, they walked just like me. They did not take advantage of you as well. And now Paul accuses them of not living a sanctified life. He accuses them of, of um, a couple of things. Number one, he says, this is a church that doesn't demonstrate love. Now, this is interesting because 1 Corinthians 13, we call that the love chapter. And Paul talks about doesn't make a difference about all of your spiritual gifts if you don't operate in love. So Paul lists a litany of behaviors that are indicative that there is a lack of love in the Corinthian church. We're going to find us in verse 20. He says, I find unto you such as you would not. Let me start from the beginning. He says, for I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not lest there be debates, envying, wraths, stripes, backbiting, whisperings, swellings, tumults. What does that mean? The, the church is in uproar. They are selfish. They are thinking of themselves. They're debating. They're envying. There's fights. There's backbiting among them. Paul says it's evidence that the love of Christ is not at work in this church. And that's a sign of the false apostles because the false apostles, remember, bring division. Remember, we learned that one sign of false um, doctrine is that it brings division. God brings unity. God brings peace. But false doctrine and false teaching brings division and chaos. And this is a sign that when Paul was teaching them, they were operating in their spiritual gifts and operating in love. And under the false apostles, now we see a lack of love and lack of division among the church. And lastly, he talks about their unrepentant uh, behaviors. Um, we would call these his, their uncleanness, 
their fornication, their lasciviousness, which is all these all sexual perversion type of sins um, and these spiritual these sins in the flesh. All right. So remember, it's the first Corinthian church that he had to check earlier because they had uh, a member of the church who was uh, marrying or, or messing around with his mother-in-law. And they allowed that behavior to happen in the church unchecked. And Paul had to check that behavior. And here he is again saying that spirit is still running rampant in the Corinthian church. The sexual perversion spirit is there. The fornication, the uncleanness, the lasciviousness, that is still there operating in the church. And I am fearful about what I'm going to find when I come. You're, you're more concerned about me coming and you're concerned about the way I'm going to come. You're concerned if I'm going to come um, boasting, if I'm going to come angry and upset. And you, you're concerned about how I'm going to be when I come. And I'm concerned about how you're going to be when I get there. And so Paul is um, checking them. He is calling them out because of their sinful behaviors. He said, are you so concerned about the false prophets and their outward and their boasting? You need to be looking internally because there's some things going on inside of you that would allow you to accept these false apostles and this false teaching. You, you're, you're, you're selfish. Um, you're, you're not having the love of Christ. You have sexual perversion running through the church. You don't appreciate um, the ministers. You don't appreciate um, the gospel of Christ that's um, been preached to you um, and, and the labor of love that has gone before you. And so Paul is now checking them in their behavior. Amen. And so that's chapter, that's um, our summary of chapter 12. And in chapter 13, Paul is going to give them some warnings. Okay. So read chapter 13 and study. Paul gives them some warnings and calls them to do self-examination. So in chapter 12, Paul defends himself based on deficits. Paul does not glory in being taken to heaven, but Paul glories in having this thorn that God allowed to remain in his flesh because when he had that thorn in his flesh, it kept him humble. It was a burden, but it came with the blessing of grace. And that the grace was sufficient for him. And that grace allowed him to be strong even in his weaknesses. All right. And so the grace allowed him to endure through those physical sufferings and accomplish all that God had for him to accomplish. And lastly, um, as he is defending his apostolic authority, he calls out the Corinthian church now. Because the Corinthian church, you've been calling me out. You've been trying to check me. Well, now let me check you. Let me tell you, there's some things going on in the church that I see based on these behaviors. And he's identifying them. And how many know that you can't change what you don't confront? And that's how you know that Paul really loves the Corinthian church because he's calling them out in their sin. He's calling them out in their wrong. If he did not love them, he'd care less what they do. When a parent loves a child, they will discipline that child. And even though if that child may not receive it, 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 it may even bring some consternation to the parent. He knows or she knows that they have to speak to that if it's because it's going to benefit the child to change. And that is what Paul is doing. He's speaking to the sin that he sees in their life. And he's calling them out because he wants them not to be angry, but he wants them to recognize and he wants them to change. Remember, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians that we are the ministers of reconciliation. And so he's about the ministry of reconciliation here. And he does that by calling them out. He's calling that sin to the forefront and letting them know where they are found wanting. So where Paul boasts in the deficits in his physical body, he wants them to know that the deficits that he has uh, allows the grace of God to be sufficient and causes him to have power in his 
weaknesses. Well, the deficits that they have are causing them to be weak and under the authority of Satan. And Paul is calling them out so they can come back into right relationship with the Lord. Amen. Well, that's our lesson for today. Hope you got some good notes. Um, let's um, take up our offering on tonight. There are uh, three ways that you can give on tonight. You can give by cash app, which is dollar sign chosen by God men. You can give by Givelify, which is chosen by God Ministries in Baltimore, Maryland. And you can give by PayPal, which is chosen by God men at gmail.com. We thank all of you for your Bible study offerings that you are giving each week that are allowing us to stay on Facebook and stay on streaming and get the word of God out because we believe in studying the word of God. Because remember, at Chosen by God, we are connecting you to God through his word. Amen. His work and then his worship in that order. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Kind Father, we thank you again for our Bible study on tonight. Thank you for allowing us to learn about the sufficiency of your grace. That God, there are times in our lives that you would allow thorns to be in our flesh. There are times in our lives that you would allow things to remain in our bodies, even though we would pray and ask for their removal. God, you allow them to stay because even though it is a burden, it becomes a blessing to us because it's in that burden that we find the sufficiency of grace, that that grace that will allow us to be strong, even in our weaknesses, that grace that will allow us to continue to do the work that you've assigned us to do, despite the deficits that may be in our physical bodies. God, we thank you for uh, bringing men and women of God that will call out our sinful behavior. Just like Paul called out the Corinthian church for where they were so that they can recognize it and they can turn back to you. God, we thank you for checking us. We thank you for calling out our behavior. We thank you for confronting us in our weakness and in our sin, God, that we might acknowledge it, ask for forgiveness, repent, and return back to you. So God, we thank you and we bless you for the word on today. Allow it to uh, be hid in our hearts that we might not sin against you. And don't allow us just to be hearers, but allow us to be doers of your word and share this word with someone else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. So as we leave this place and never from your presence, bring us back together again at the hour that you shall appoint. It's in Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. And we will see you next time.